Hello everyone, this is Shaladio and uh, you're welcome to this uh, presentation where I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up um, a self-hosted um, Docker build agent. That's an agent that you can use in uh, building Docker applications. Uh, there are two possible use cases for this. Uh, the first use case could be a security requirement where you are uh, expected. Uh, could be a security requirement where you are expected to um, not host your build agents uh, with Microsoft. That's uh, you have to keep your build agents in house. So that's um, the first possible use case. The second possible use case is uh, also providing um, an option to the publicly hosted build agent. Uh, that's the Ubuntu one that builds a uh, Docker applications just in the event that uh, the Microsoft agents go down. So those are two reasons why I believe every DevOps uh, person should uh, be at least be aware and be converse, conversant with how to uh, set up their own build agents that can build uh, Docker applications within the pipeline process. So uh, let's have a go at this now. Okay, I'm going to make two assumptions. Uh, the first assumption is that um, you already have um, a cluster set up on Azure, uh, a Kubernetes uh, cluster. Now, this application here is called Lens. It's free. You can get it off the internet and you can use it to monitor several clusters. You can see I've got many clusters open uh, on this application. So this is the particular cluster I'm going to be working with. And you can see that all the pods were created, you know, like a week ago, three weeks ago. Well, actually, you know, got this done uh, three weeks ago. So uh, nothing is here that was created today. So effectively, this is a brand new AKS installation. Then also, I want to assume that you already have um, a container registry. And uh, let's, let's say a container registry on your Azure and a key vault. We're going to be needing a container registry and a key vault. So let's have a look at this. A container registry and a key vault. So uh, let's have a look. Yeah. So this is the container registry. This is where you uh, store your uh, Docker images uh, that you're building uh, through your pipeline. So you can see repositories. So these are uh, various uh, ones that have um, been building over the days. So that's um, the container registry. And then also you need a key vault. Give it whatever name you want, uh, and either the key vault or the container registry. So this is a key vault. And I will need you to have a secret in there called Azure Pack Token. You can give it any name you want as well but that would also reflect in the pipelines. I gave it this name because um, these are the names that I'm using uh, on my pipeline code because we're going to be using uh, some Azure DevOps uh, best practices to put this pipeline in place so that it can be reusable and repeatable and extensible as well. So, so you need those two resources at a minimum, or three resources rather, your Kubernetes cluster, your key vault, and your container registry and uh, you also need access to uh, github so you need access to github and uh, you will be able to uh, clone uh, the code the uh, the sample code down and you'll be able to run it on your own so which is uh, the whole essence of this uh, presentation you'll be able to do it yourself after this presentation so uh, we're just going to get into business now and let's see so what I need, what I'll be doing is to create a new project. And once I'm done with the new project, I'm going to just delete it. So let's create a new project called YouTube. Let's do that very quickly. YouTube, let's make it public and create. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go into project settings and create one or two connections. So create a service connection. I'm going to create a Docker 
registry connection. Then we pick Azure Container Registry. So it's going to run through my linked uh, subscription. I suggest very strongly that you use the same subscription uh, both for your portal and your Azure DevOps. So as a developer, you already have would have had admin rights on both, so it's a lot easier. So this is the, reg uh, the container registry we saw earlier on. Then we give it a name, so let's call it Docker Connection GitHub because that project is coming from Docker. You can give it any name really, but these are the names that I'm using on my pipeline, so I decided to make it consistent and then you save it. So the next thing you want to do is to create what we call an environment. An environment has many uses uh, within Azure DevOps. It can let you monitor your releases, your deployment gates, and uh, your deployment conditions. So, so we're going to create an environment. We'll call it uh, YouTube. Call it YouTube. And at the same time, we're going to create um, a Docker a connection rather a connection to um, AKS the current AKS installation and we're gonna call it docker now when you do that uh, let's say okay so we're gonna call it docker the reason for this is I want to create a new namespace on Azure called docker and this is where we're gonna put in all our um, all our resources that have to do with this project in this namespace called Docker. Okay, so validate and create. Yeah, so you got YouTube and we got Docker underneath. Then we need to create a variable group. Now this is the reason for the variable group. Remember I showed you a key vault, and this is what we're going to use in. Um, pulling down values from the key vault. So let's give the key vault a name. Key vault. Oop, I was doing the, I was on the wrong, um, let's go to library, add variable group. Yeah. Okay. Key vault. Let's call it YouTube again. And this time we're going to flick the switch on so we can link it to we can link it link it to, uh, to that key vault I showed you earlier on on Azure. Okay, so let's authorize it. Yeah, so it's authorizing now. And then the next thing is um, we just want to grab the key vault. So that's the key vault. Authorize that again. Okay, and then we add the variables. So this two other ones we need the container registry password and if I will, might not need the container registry password just the Azure part token here because we already have a connection to the uh, container registry so Azure part token and then we save this so we're done with the initial setup uh, within um, Azure DevOps so the next thing we want to do is to uh, pull the code down. So let's go into here and um, let's just look for just look for some folder. Do 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 do. AKS Docker agents. No, just uh, yeah, YouTube demo. Yeah, this one. Okay, we already have a folder here, so that's nice. Then um, we 
you can just go into Visual Studio Code. That's uh, the preferred tool for um, handling situations like this. So let's go open that folder, YouTube demo. Yep. Yeah, and there is nothing there. Okay. So let's get PowerShell running. I just, I just prefer to always have PowerShell open. Then um, what we need to do is to grab the URL for the project. So this one, AKS Docker Agents YouTube. You can uh, fuck it away, clone it, and uh, do as you please with it. Okay. So we'll come over here git clone yeah so okay you can see here now so let's just run do a quick run through of the code um, let's see let's open all the subfolders out okay now this is where the journey starts from it starts from the pipeline here and we got two build state two stages the first stage is what we call the build stage and in this build stage is going to use can you see docker registry service uh, connection so in this stage what it's going to do is um, it's going to execute the instructions we have in this docker file now the instructions are as follows it will pull down this image and then also it will download docker itself it will download docker and build and uh, bake that docker downloaded docker into the image and then it will create a folder called data copy this file into it because we're just going to need it for a sample run then the same file also it will copy it into azp and this is where the build agent is going to run from and then when the image has been deployed on Kubernetes. It's going to start the script start.sh, and what start.sh does is to uh, actually download Azure pipelines and install it, and then make that connection, make that connection back to Azure DevOps from within Kubernetes using the path token. You see, this is the token, the token that we kept in the key vault. That's the real, real thing that token must never make its way into github so that's why it's stored in a vault and it's the pipeline process that will pull that token from the vault and push it into your kubernetes but it must never come into your github so these are the environment variables that we got here uh, you can see docker registry service connection this looks familiar docker connection github you remember this so these are various uh, variables that we have in there. So, so let's have a run uh, with this. So let's go to the pipeline here. Then let's try to create a pipeline. Uh, let's be sure that our key vault is okay. Yeah, it's okay. So let's go to pipeline. So we're going to create a new pipeline, uh, GitHub, we're going through GitHub. So this one, Docker Regents YouTube, then we select, with, uh, let's see, existing, yeah, there's an existing file. So we're running off. Uh, the master branch and we're picking this one continue so this was the same pipeline we looked at the other time so this is the build stage that will build uh, the docker file and this is the deploy stage in the deploy stage we have uh, three jobs I think about three jobs uh, the first job is going to tokenize uh, the manifest file we forgot to look at the manifest file and then it's going to create a path 
token secret within the AKS and it's going to pull that from your key vault using this variable group here that we created and the next thing is is going to deploy the manifest to AKS and it's going to delete the tokenized file so this way no trace of your path token is left anywhere on the build server and then the next job is to create a delay of two minutes to allow the AKS port that we created here to connect to Azure pipelines and the last job is to just uh, go into that data file to run the script uh, to run the script and uh, using the new agent pool that we created docker pool name uh, let me show you where that is on the code you see docker pool name yeah this one this one here yeah. oh and by the way we need to create this new pool on Azure DevOps so let's have a go at that so if you go into Google Chrome here uh, in the meantime we can spin this up and run it it's gonna likely ask us for some permissions Yeah, let's see. Build stage. Okay, yeah, I knew it. So we're just gonna give permissions to use the key vault. So the permission is granted and the build can start. So while that is going on, we need to um, create a pool, an agent pool. So add pool and new self-hosted pool. I will put in that name Mon Docker YouTube this can be any name you want but uh, this is the name that I'm using in my uh, pipeline so it has to be consistent create and there you go so you can see that we have a job running on the Azure pipelines at the moment and it's this one yeah so it's building the docker file now that is going to take a very long while but while that is going on um, i want to quickly take you through the manifest file very simple one a deployment file and we have a lot of um, tokens in there so this is how we identify a token um, two underscore leading underscores and trailing underscores this tells the tokenization process that replace this entire thing with whatever you find here image repository where is that yeah this one so it's going to replace whatever it finds here with this now let's have another look at that no no one this is container registry you see leading and trailing underscores and it's going to replace that with this so it's a very good way of um of you know like parameterizing your uh, deployment process across uh, many environments so you can see this is a pool name that we have here that we're going to supply to the port docker pool name and you can see the docker pool name here so that's what we have on the manifest and then we also have uh, some uh, resources request here CPU and memory and the resource limits here CPU and memory so very simple and uh, we also put a progress deadline in seconds of 30 minutes reason is that uh, it takes time for the pods uh, and everything to uh, get ready so this is just like a safety net really just to allow 30 minutes but it doesn't really take up to 30 minutes it doesn't okay so let's see how our build is going on yeah our build is still going on this is definitely going to uh, keep going on for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, it's quite a major uh, massive uh, image that it's pulling down so I'm going to pause the video here and come back uh, when the build this uh, stages are completed and when it's about to go into the uh, docker deploy stage the 
build step is almost fully done now. Uh, that's for the uh, Docker images, uh, Docker image rather. Okay, and then it's gonna push it, which is done in very quickly. So it's gonna go to the next stage, and the next stage starts with um, a deployment. This day, this job here. So this entire process, this is being done using the uh, Ubuntu build, Ubuntu image on Microsoft uh, hosted agent, and this next one. Um, it's been done with uh, Visual Studio 2017 image because of the PowerShell token replacement tasks. Okay, so it's going to download the secrets because we're going to be needing a secret here. Uh, from the key vault and then download the artifacts created in the build stage which has that uh, manifest file that we're going to tokenize and then this is the tokenization going on here so it's going to replace uh, those placeholders with real values the ones I showed you in the manifest file and then it's going to create the secret within Kubernetes using that path token from Microsoft uh, Azure, the Azure portal, and then this is the deployment to AKS. So the deployment has started, the rollout has started. So, so if we go to AKS now, we should see some new pods with a namespace Docker. Can you see it? Namespace Docker. So these are the new pods. Now let's have a look and see what's going on on the logs for the new pod. See what's going on is now beginning to execute start.sh. So it's executing start.sh, trying to install the pipeline agent on the pod. In the meantime, let's have a look at the build itself and see how far it's gone. Yeah, so right now is on this timer delay job. So this timer is going to run for two minutes before going to have a sample run on the new agent. Now the reason for that is the installation process uh, on the port might take a while. So you see, uh, it takes less than two minutes, but you know, just to be on the safe side, we want to allow two minutes, a two minute delay, so that we can be sure that uh, the agent is fully installed uh, on the port, so that this job, this bash job here, that is defined here uh, let's say is defined here this one here can run and it's just going to do three things really uh, list the directory called data remove it and then do a pwd on it on where it is running from so just those three things to test the new pool that we've just created and to test the new pipeline so you see listening for jobs the pipeline is ready uh, the agent is ready to run yeah and let's go back to Azure DevOps yeah so it's just about finishing this before it goes to run the bash job in the meantime let's have a quick look at the agent so if you go into this here you'll see the details the agents rather so you can see two agents in green here. These two have just been created. Yeah, these two have just been created. These are old ones that I've been using for other tests. But these two in green are the current ones. So let's go back to the pipeline and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, so it's running the bash job now. So you can see it's got in the pool. Pool Docker YouTube. Yeah, so that's where it's going to run the job from. So he started running the job now.
So as usual, it's going to just download the artifact and download the secrets from the build stage. And then it's going to run these three tasks. These three tasks. Yeah. Yeah, so all the three tasks have been run completely. And then just going to do the post job checkout. So we've had a very successful run. So we now have build agents, uh, our own self hosted build agent uh, sitting on Azure DevOps. So you see just now. So you ran, so you ran this job here, this bash job here. So that's what it ran. So let's go back to uh, the agent pools again. So we see these are the two agents. So this is the particular one that was selected, two agents in the pool in green. This is the particular one that was selected to run that bash job. So this can be done by anyone. It's repeatable, it's reusable, and um, it's so easy. All you just have to do is make sure you set up your prerequisites, set up an AKS, make sure you have connection to it from your Azure DevOps, uh, create a key vault, create a container registry where you can put your builds into, uh, your images into, and there you have an agent. And you can see that the agent works because we've been able to, uh, let's go back to, it, the agent works because we've been able to refer to it here, docker pool name, and run these three tasks. And that's, and that's it for now. So, um, Happy agenting and see you some other time. There will be a part two of that will be a part two of this where I could uh possibly be running a sample project. In fact, I think I can I think I've got enough time to quickly do the sample project actually. So let's quickly do that. So let's go to Google Chrome and let's go over here. This is a sample app that I did, which we can use uh, yeah, to test that pool again. So let's go to this one here, git clone. Yeah, so you can get out of GitHub for free. And what we're gonna do before we try to run it, we're going to create uh, one or two prerequisites on Azure DevOps. And this is what we're going to do. Uh, service connections. So we're going to create an AKS connection. That's Kubernetes connection. So we're going to pick the cluster. There's only one cluster on the subscription. And then um, we're going to pick a namespace. So let's pick on default, use that. And um, just give it a name, call this AKS Calculator Demo. Yeah. AKS Calculator. AKS calculator demo. Yeah, grant access to all pipelines. And we're using the default namespace. And then the next thing we want to do is to create an environment. I like the use of environment uh, in my pipelines, make things a lot easy. So we're gonna create a new environment. We're gonna call it dev. So, dev environment, Kubernetes. So, just uh, authenticating, so it can give us a list of clusters within that subscription. We have just one. 
and on this one we're going to create a new namespace called dev a new namespace called dev yep so validate and create and then I'm gonna create another environment and call it a p s cal calculator aks calculator demo and we're going to connect that to the dev namespace so we'll connect that to the dev namespace within kubernetes so that's all done so if you look at links now for instance i'm going to let's look for namespaces so you can see in the last 30 minutes we've had two new namespaces docker is one that holds the build agent and this is where we want to deploy our sample application into dev you see uh let's have a look on secret so we created a secret uh, the other time let's uh, so you see Monazure DevOps Path Token. This is where we installed our token into. Okay, so let's quickly uh, run this pipeline. So new pipeline, GitHub, and AKS Docker Agent Sample App. That's the one. There you go. So what this does is it's gonna um, build a .NET Core application, and it's gonna use our new agent, self-hosted AKS Agent. That's what it's gonna use to for the build. And once it's done the build, it's gonna do a deploy when. It's going to bypass the pull request stage and just going to deploy it into dev dev so environment dev namespace dev on the kubernetes cluster and it's going to use the aks calculator uh yaml manifest and if you're interested you can have a look at the manifest so that was a pipeline we just uh we just saw the other time and um, this is a manifest here so this is a manifest that deploys uh, the application to kubernetes so it's going to deploy two replicas of it and we're going to see two pods okay so let's run this very quickly yeah this runs a lot quicker than the agent one and we're going to test this application we're going to see that it actually works so you see is requested for an agent from this pool so if you go to uh, this agent pool here you'll see that we have something running see we have a job running on one of the pools you can see that agents so it's running it's running this build if we click on it it takes you to the job right here so so we're running this in-house now we're not uh, using a microsoft agent for this build so we're running this in-house i told you this will run uh, significantly faster than the other one so the build is completed it's pushed the image into the container registry on azure and it's publishing the pipeline artifact so if you look on azure let's go to azure let's go to the container registry you can see the repositories here yeah? so you can see the agent here we created 4th of october the very first one 8 51 a.m and this one aks calculator 4th of october as well yeah so 9 a.m 9 05 a.m 9 05 a.m 9 06 rather 
created one minute ago. So let's see what's going on on the pipeline. So the deployment has started on the pipeline and it's using still using our um, still using our what do you call it now our pool yeah see agent machine name AKS docker so you can see this is the name of the port and it's running so it's going to download the artifact and then it's going to run the deployment across so you see this is a container registry So you see, the deployment has started. So it's already deployed it to Kubernetes. So it's waiting for the external IP address that we're going to use in testing the application. So if you go to length here, see the pods, AKS calculator on the dev namespace, 20 seconds ago. So you can see this. Let's see if we have any logs. Okay, no logs are available yet. So you see that? let's have a look let's uh, SSH privately into one of these shells yeah so you can see this is the AZ AZP that we're using you can do ls on it you can see start.sh and you can see the agent folder I mean this is so good so you can even have a look at what is running on your port and look at the folders and we don't get that privilege if you're running a Microsoft hosted agent. So it's still waiting uh, for the external IP assignment. Let's have a look. So if you go to Lens, you can go to services here. Yeah? You can see that the AKS calculator has been deployed. Actually, it already has an IP address. So we can use this IP address, copy this IP address out, external IP, control C, and then go to Chrome, open a new tab, and then throw it in and you're gonna see the application uh, respond let's give it a few seconds yep and that's it it's a simple web API written in .NET Core 3 the simplest you can ever find and that's the application loading so this is the uh, swagger definition it has just he has just uh, one method in it and the response is string so if you open up the method impute one impute two two numbers just add two numbers and that's what it is really to be honest so if you add six and seven and execute You see that result is 13 and a return code of 200. Now, it should execute faster this time, yeah, because that was the first time, yeah. So, the result is 13. See, 6 plus 7 is 13. 6 plus 99 is 105. And then let's try to chuck in an error. I already trapped this anyway, so it's not going to bomb out. So, you see, input string was not in a correct format. Now, this is what you can do. If you go into Lens and go into AKS Calculator, let's go into the first port here and check the logs. Can you see? You saw what we did 6 plus 7, 13, 6 plus 7, 13, 6 plus 7, 13, 6 plus 9, 105. And then those two examples we did, there was a failure. You see? Crap info sent through G A H G G G and 99. And if you go out here, G A G G G G and 99. So you can see. So it means that when you host your applications uh, on Kubernetes, you can, you know, have your login set up and you can see what is going on uh, within the logs on your pod, I mean, which is very cool. And we've built this application using our self hosted agent. So this is really so cool. And these two repos are available on my GitHub. So this one here, I'll put the links there for you so you pick the right ones. 
uh, the AKS Docker Regions sample app and the AKS Docker Regions YouTube. So these are the two ones. This is the agent one and this is the sample application. Swagger UI and that's it done. And um, we can do something here just as a quick bonus. Um, CD, let's go to CD, AKS, Docker, Agents, Sample App, and then do Git. Check out minus B, add new functionality. So add new functionality. And um, if you then go into the source, I've got something commented out there, so which we can uncomment. This one here. So this is going to give us a subtract functionality so let's save this up let's save this up and uh, let's okay so let's um, add a message added subtract functionality and then commit and then push it so we've pushed this up so let's see what's going on on Azure DevOps so this is the sample app here and then we're gonna run the pipeline add new functionality and then run so this is our new branch. Imagine you working on adding new functionality to it. So it's going to only use our new uh, agent pool again. And like I said, this one built a lot quicker than the one that gave us the agent. So it's going to pull the .NET Core 3.1 image down and then build the application. So the application is built, it's labeling the image and then it's going to push it into the container registry. Yeah, it's pushing it now. And it's all done. And the next thing is it's going to deploy it so while it's deploying let's go over to lens and ambush it so you can see this was done seven minutes ago you're going to see some changes now very soon we're going to see this port destroyed and new ones created very soon Ooh, let's see what's going on. Are we there yet? Oh, okay. It was not there yet. That's why we're waiting. So now it's going to do it now. Okay. Just watch out. You see? New pods. So the old ones have been destroyed and new ones created. Can you see that now? Old ones destroyed, new ones created. Let's go to service. Still there, same IP address. Endpoint, still there. Yeah, still there. 
Let's go to pod. Yep. So 30 seconds ago, 35 seconds ago. So, and the deployment is done. So let's go over to this and refresh this. Yeah, because it's spinning up the application, so it takes quite a while to get start up, get started. So, yeah, so we had a good run here. So we're waiting for the application to start up. It's talking to AKS. all this built using our own self-hosted agent self-hosted docker build agent on kubernetes oh wow still waiting let's check what's going on on lens let's see services Yeah, that's the IP address. Let's do this again. Yeah. So you see, you got two functions now, add and subtract. Let's test it. Try it out. 66 minus 55, the answer should be obvious. So that's 11 running for the first time. So subsequent runs goes quick. Error. And then go into lens. Go into your pod. Let's check the first one. Logs, see. And that was it. Then the second one, probably might not find anything there. Okay, it didn't it didn't use this pod. So but it's automatically scheduled. So so that's it for now. Uh, we've been able to demonstrate how to create your own Docker build agent. We've been able to um, use it to build um, another application, deployed it to Kubernetes, and we saw the application work through the internet. So please feel free to hit me up if you have any questions on getting this set up. Bye for now. And uh, yeah, so, and all the resources are there. This is your GitHub where you can uh, pull these two repos down and build them. So I'll put the links on the video anyway and uh, you shouldn't have a problem replicating it in your own um, environment. So bye for now.